Alright, so E3 might be dead, but video games are very much still alive. And I want to talk about a bunch of upcoming ones that I'm really excited for. I'm like the mayor from a cloudy with a chance of meatballs, but instead of eating a bunch of food, I just eat video games. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's how you know my opinion is fact. But the first thing I want to know is, um, who is responsible for this? Huh? What insane goblin makes a 7 plus hour demo game that is this insanely polished and plops it onto Steam for free? This is free! Zero dollars! I feel like I'm robbing a store playing this because the quality of it is so immensely good and I can easily see the full version becoming one of my favorite 3D platforming games of all time. Filet group, whatever it is you guys are doing. Please keep going monkey mode because I am loving it to bits. Just just please don't end up like this, okay? Wait, what the hell? Yeah, um, so they, they are remaking Yuka Lele, which is really confusing. The original version of 2017 was kind of a mess, but if I'm honest, I still enjoyed it. Kind of. Not really. You can plop a bunch of graphical enhancements and new lighting effects on the screen, but it's all worthless when the core of the game is still rotten. So I am hoping they can fix and iron out all the issues of the original. Uh, the big one of those is uh, removing the casino level. Uh, j just remove it, okay? Get rid of it. Indiana Jones game had a funny German guy going... Choo -choo, choo -choo. <laughs> 7 billion copies, please. Angerfoot is coming out very soon. Uh, this is the, the, the Thanos twerking game. So uh, instant masterpiece. Hashtag blood just released. Same goes for the Elden Ring DLC and Fallen Aces. To everyone that's saying gaming sucks nowadays, what are you smoking? I don't get it. You, just stop playing Call of Duty. Okay, you know what? It might actually be good. There is always only one reason to buy a Call of Duty game, and that is for the zombies. The campaign is uh, usually alright to quickly zoom through. Multiplayer is a mess where you can have a squad with Nicki Minaj, Homelander, and a Gundam. But zombies has always been goofy sandbox fun, where you can mess around with a bunch of mythical, powerful weapons and upgrades. It's just a shame that it has kind of gone down a shitty road for the last half a decade. They showed like 20 seconds of footage, they are bringing round based maps back which is good but also salvage which, which is not good. All I'm asking for is, is just please go back to this, I don't want to play another Cold War man, just please I I'm praying. Also 80 euros, are you mentally deranged? PlayStation is making Overwatch 3? Just why multiplayer PvP games are dying, man. TF2 and CSGO are unplayable. Valorant sucks. Every lobby of Fortnite is filled with 50% bots. Garden Warfare is rotting in a ditch somewhere. Battlefield is going to be a tremendous life service. So that's an instant turn off. And uh, this, uh, this looks like ass. But Sony also showed this. This is good. I like this. Pizza Tower 2. Hell yeah, another little to the left DLC, looks neat, another dredge DLC, looks neat, there's a game called Egging On and it mentally hurts me by just looking at it. Can't wait to rip out my own hair! Silk Song, on the other hand, is still nowhere to be seen, so instead I'm going to talk about my two other most anticipated Metroidvanias. Constance is the first one of these, which looks really promising, and it seems like they are focusing on that beautiful, fluid, platforming sh movement. You know, chaining abilities together and zooming through its scenery, which damn man, that scenery is really pretty. And the other one I'm excited for is, of of course, Metroid Prime 4. I don't know how they managed to make a game look this good on a rusty and half-broken console that is held together with duct tape. I mean, look what that Funko Fusion game looks like. Uh, this is what I think of when someone says Nintendo Switch or that cool Deadly Premonition game where you shoot an alligator at 10 FPS. 
Hell yeah. To be fair though, they didn't really show anything special with Metroid Prime 4 yet. It just looks like more Metroid Prime so far. But if we can expect that same level of quality as the remake from last year, it's a done deal and this game will be a masterpiece. You have 2A T where you play as a boy that is stuck in a T pose. Uh, very cute. New Zelda game looks like it's asking you to break the game's engine by stacking bats on top of each other and I'm all for it. It's Software wants to make a Quake game but Xbox said nuh -uh. So they still made a Quake game disguised as a Doom game. This is definitely one of the highlights. Both prior Doom games were badass first person shooters that brought the Doom franchise back into the limelight. They are awesome. And now you have a chainsaw shield and a gun that grinds skulls and shoots the fragments of it? And you can ride a dragon? Come on, man. The only thing I'm a little worried about is the soundtrack. It hasn't been confirmed yet, but I'm pretty sure that Mick Gordon won't be returning after what happened between him and Bethesda. Which sucks, because the music of the two modern Doom games were a huge part of its identity, so I hope they can still deliver on that front. Like, please, do not mess up the music, please. What else do we got? British Fallout? Eh, you know what? This looks kind of funny. If they are gonna have some sort of healing item in this game, please make it a Greg sausage roll or spotted dick. Just any British cuisine, because that would be so funny. You have Flock. Now, uh, this is a game where you and a buddy can ride a bird and make a little pack together, and it looks really pretty, but you also have Big Walk, which is a sort of similar concept, but this one is made by the people that made that funny goose game. This one just looks like such a vibe man and your enjoyment of it will definitely depend with who you are playing it with because I can already see myself getting the most idiotic group of friends together and just punching each other for the entire game. Uh, kind of like Dead Rising 3 where the best part is continuously attacking your co-op partner for no real reason. If House House is watching this, Please let me wreck all my friends around like it's Gary's mod, I'm begging man. UFO 50 is a really cool concept for a game because it's actually 50 games made by a fictional company that went out of business. And it's made by Derek Yu, who is responsible for the best game of 2020, so uh, this should be good. Demon Spore, The Plucky Squire, Skate Story, Baby Steps, Hyperlight Breaker, Rift of the Necrodancer, and Deltarune still don't have solid release windows. Most of them just say 2024. But at least Bopsy 3D is getting re-released. That's not a joke. This is real. They are really doing this. And their selling point is, is that the, the, the games are troubled. It is literally in the description of the Steam page. All right, I have one more game I want to talk about. No More Room in Hell 2. Now, uh, No More Room in Hell 1 is a stupid, jerky piece of garbage source game with some really frustrating and unconventional mechanics. But for some reason, I have pumped 50 hours into it. I don't remember doing this, but I did. And the big reason for that is because the game is co-op and really accessible. So when these guys showed up with no more room in hell too. I went why? But it looks kind of fun if I'm honest. They aren't using the source engine anymore, which is good. It looks a lot less finicky and stupid. It genuinely looks like a big upgrade and I can see it being a lot of fun. The thing is though, it's hard to have faith in these zombie games when the last big one we had was this. Please don't mess it up. Goodbye everyone, take care.